past few years, we've lived in a couple cities around the world, and we decided that this month we are going to talk about each of those cities in separate videos and kind of just compare them, talk about things that we liked or didn't quite like. So throughout this month, we're going to be talking about Toronto, Vancouver, uh, Phnom Penh, the Okanagan, and Sydney. And as you know, because you clicked this video, um, today we're going to be talking about Sydney. So we're from Canada, but we moved to Sydney after we were living in Phnom Penh. Um, so we were there on a working holiday visa for about six months. I think it's important to mention that we lived in Phnom Penh before we went to Sydney because it did change our perspective of living in that city a little bit. But we can say this for pretty much all of our videos that we don't have a lot of negative things to say about anywhere that we've lived. Um, we're pretty stoked that we've been able to live in all these places and um, Sydney is no exception. So we're just going to talk a little bit about that and what our experience was like there. Of course, this is just our opinion, just our perspective um, of what it was like for us to be living there. As you probably know, Australia in general is a country where people generally have a pretty good high quality of life. Um, the air is clean, the water's clean, there's good healthcare, good education. It's all around um, a safe, clean place to live. So depending on what your circumstances, like if you're thinking about moving abroad for the first time and you're considering Australia, I think that it's actually a really good choice. It's well set up, it's safe, it's clean. Um, it'd be a really good like starter place I think for a lot of expats and because there are a lot of expats there it's really easy to find an apartment so we had no troubles finding a place in Sydney after we posted a post for like what like a few days or we found a post or something and we yeah. just checked it out and that was it like it's really easy to find a place to live there um, we lived in multiple places while we were there there's no shortage of finding a place to live whether you want to live by yourself whether you want to live with roommates place by the beach or something more expensive or, or less expensive it, there's tons of options yeah. because there's so many expats in and out of the country it's a traveler kind of country so there's a lot of options for places that you can just pick up a lease and uh, there. Yeah, I found Sydney to be like a really inviting city in general. Like it wasn't very hard at all to find an apartment. Um, it's not very hard to make other friends that are expats. We lived in a house actually at one point that had like a whole bunch of different um, travelers in it. Yeah, I think we were staying with some Peruvians, a uh, guy from Ireland. Yeah, someone from Colombia. Uh, someone from Colombia. A lot of South Americans and then uh, a guy from Ireland. So. Yeah, we, we, we lived with people from all over the world, and I yeah. think that was really cool because, of, of course, Sydney's one of the like bigger cities in the world, um, so it really is like a hub for a lot of other travelers. If that's something that you're interested in is, meet, is meeting other people, then Sydney is a really great place to go. And because of that, there's just really great food. Um, there's a lot of food options. There's cheap food options. There's expensive food options. There's all sorts of things in between, just like any major city in the world. Like I said, it's a bit of a hub, so if you're craving anything, that you'll be able to find it there. You might be like, okay, well that's obvious um, because it's a big city, but actually for a lot of expats who have lived in different places of the world where it's kind of hard to find like their own cuisine, I'm pretty sure in Sydney you're always going to be covered. We found some really great restaurants and like places that we really like to go to. Yeah, yeah. there's obviously tons of vegetarian and vegan places. And coffee lovers too, coffee lovers rejoice. For us, we're not really crazy coffee lovers, so... I just um, like having coffee. I yeah, don't really we're very care. American in that way. We like our cup of joe and that's it. But these are just places that I consider like expensive coffee places. Mm -hmm. but yeah, if that's your thing, got you covered. So within Sydney, it's a relatively good mix of city and nature. There's tons of beaches that like outline the in, like the entire coast. So there's a ton of nature in that way. Um, which is great. So if you're the type of person that like really does better in your life when you're around like lots of nature, lots of greenery, beaches, ocean, all that kind of stuff, of course Sydney has all of that. Um, although it is a big city, you're able to get out and go into nature, so that is really important. Yeah, for if you're in the heart of, of the CBD, which is like downtown, like the heart of downtown Sydney, it's like a 30 to 45 minute train ride straight to the beach, or if you wanted to go up into the Blue Mountains, I think it's like a three hour train ride, uh, which is another great thing about the city is that they have trains that go everywhere. Yeah, they go everywhere. That's like, in Vancouver, that's a really big flaw because the train systems, like the bus systems are really great, but the train systems aren't set up that far. The train's incredible, especially if you're living out of the city, you can get anywhere 
wherever, whenever. I think a lot of the locals will laugh at us. They used to laugh at me when we were living there and I was saying like, oh, the transit system is so great. They're like, oh, the transit system is trash. I'm like, oh, it's so good. It's really clean. It runs basically all the time and it goes pretty much everywhere. So all those boxes for me are checked um, and I, I think that the transit system in Sydney is really good. But the one downside that I personally experienced with this um, as someone who doesn't have a car and someone who likes to walk places is that Although it's easy to walk around and skate places like we did, like if you kind of planned your life and you have your apartment near the place that you work, um, it's really great. But in terms of going to different areas of Sydney completely, um, exploring different areas, or say you worked on the other side of town, the city is pretty spread out. This has to do with its size, but I also just found that the layout of the neighborhoods was hard to get used to for me personally, but it's not something that I can really change just because the city is so big. If you're the type of person that really likes to explore the city that you're in, like I am, you're gonna have to put in a lot of work and like find out how to get there by transit and in some cases like spend the entire day just exploring a, a different area. So going back to what I was talking about earlier like with the apartment um, and how it's really easy to find apartments, it's also the same for jobs there. Rachel and I were fortunate enough to find jobs in our field, um, me in skateboarding and her in film and production which was crazy like we didn't expect that at all. It wasn't difficult to find, we just handed out a few resumes and yeah, we had lots of calls back and we kind of got to pick yeah, what we, we wanted. Yeah, we kind of got to pick, which was really cool. And they were at like high paying, so the pay in Australia in comparison to especially Canada or the US um, is really high. Like the pay is really high, the minimum wage alone is very high, and a lot of places don't pay minimum wage, they pay way higher than that. Here where we live, the minimum wage is $14. and. A lot of places pay $14 an hour, like a lot. Um, in Australia, I found that most places didn't pay the minimum wage, they paid much higher. Of course, you have to take in consideration the conversion rate, but I think it's important to mention because like for you, for example, you got to work at a skate shop, which here would probably pay $14 an hour, yeah. but there it paid super well. And we were able to not only live and enjoy our lives in Sydney, but we were also able to save a lot of money and we ended up going traveling after living there. It was so super, super, super easy to save, on top of it being an enjoyable place to work. The job that I had there, uh, skateboarding, was probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. I got to work at a skate shop, which was cool, selling the products, but a lot of the time I was out at schools and we were teaching kids how to skateboard. They would send me out to the skate park or wherever the parents wanted to meet and I would teach them kind of the basics and it was by far probably one of the best jobs I've ever had. I can't really think of one that I was happier at and I was making the most money I've ever made. I think that's really a huge part of why our experience in Sydney was enjoyable, but we didn't do anything special in order to get these jobs. Like we were just applying like any regular place and we ended up getting, like I said, high paying jobs that we genuinely enjoyed. It does match how expensive the city is, uh, especially if you're planning on uh, going out and having drinks at the bar or um, just kind of doing recreational activities um, that typically cost money. The prices of things reflect the wage that you're getting paid. Uh, so it is a pretty expensive city to live in, but if you're working there, it for the most part will reflect what you're, what you're making. And I think that most employers understand that you're in one of the most expensive cities in the world. So um, it money wasn't really an issue for us when we were there. But yeah, there's no doubt that it's an expensive city in general. And the last kind of downside won't apply to everyone because it's so deeply personal. We moved to Sydney, like Nick said at the beginning of the video, right after we were living in Cambodia. So one, we already had a huge attachment to Cambodia and we were really sad to leave. And two, I was already very homesick. So we had been gone for a while already and now I was starting to miss home. Sydney, in my opinion, is very, very similar to Vancouver. I kind of just felt like I was like displaced a little bit. Like I was like, oh, I recognize this entire feeling and this whole entire vibe of this city, but I don't have my family or my friends here. Before people ask why we wouldn't just stay there for like the entirety of um, our visa and then our second year visa, we didn't do that because of those circumstances that we were in. But the good news is that it's an international flight hub. You're never gonna be stuck there. You're gonna always be able to get a flight home. The airport's right there. And the planes go to basically everywhere in the world. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video. We're gonna be doing videos on um, all the places we lived this month. We're gonna be posting one a week. So if you have any specific questions about Sydney or any of the other places that we've lived, um, please let us know. If you ask the questions about the other places before we film 
film the video, we'll try to include them in the video. We hope that everybody is staying safe and staying healthy, and you have good luck, and we will talk to you again soon.